Chapter 12 Around the World in 72 Days Theme Travel Kick Start One sleepless night Elizabeth Cochrane who wrote under the name Nellie B had an extraordinary idea she would break the fictional record of Phileas Fogg who went around the world in 80 days in Jules Verne's popular novel read about her journey around the world in 72 days in 1889 in the late 1800s it took many months to travel around the world boats were late trains were slow and connections were often missed but nelly checked the timetables and was convinced she could beat fogg's record her editor was doubtful a woman could not travel alone he argued and transferring her dozens of trunks would cause missed connections but nelly was determined she didn't need a companion and could travel with only one piece of hand luggage besides if the world wouldn't send her she would simply find another newspaper that would finally her editor relented the question was could she start her journey in 2 days the short notice didn't faze nelly a bit she visited a dressmaker and ordered a dress that would stand constant wear for 3 months then she bought a long loose coat and one handbag 16 into 7 into which she would squeeze all her essentials for nelly blee the clock began ticking at 9:40 am november 14 1889 when a ship the augusta victoria steamed away from its pier in hoboken new jersey she had been warned of intense heat bitter cold terrible storms shipwrecks and fevers but her greatest fear was failure she said she would rather return dead than alive and behind time along the route she would cable stories back to the world sharing with her readers rare glimpses into life on the other side of the globe no sooner had the augusta victoria left harbor then blee was confronted with her first challenge overcoming sea sickness and she is going around the world one man's need but nelly's motto was energy rightly applied and directed will accomplish anything by the time she arrived in southampton england she had conquered her sea sickness and was in good spirits from southampton nelly made a quick side trip to amiens france to meet julius one together they charted her journey on the map one had used to outline phileas fogg's route then worried about missing her train to brincy italy nelly departed the trip through france in italy was dark cold and foggy when the train arrived at brincy 2 hours late Nelly feared her ship the Victoria had sailed without her luckily it was still in port so on she traveled without delay on through the Suez canal to Aden Yemen a shipboard friend told Nelly it was rumored she was an eccentric american heiress traveling about with a hairbrush and a bank book Nelly reached colombo now sri lanka two days ahead of schedule then her luck ran out her next ship the oriental was delayed 5 days any more delays between colombo and hong kong would mean losing her race nelly lost patience when an elderly gentleman suggested that colombo was a pleasant place to stay it may be she exclaimed if staying there does not mean more than life to one Nelly was infuriated by another day long delay in Singapore which she feared would seal her doom that night she endured agonies of suspense and impatience the next day she toured the city though and bought a monkey who she named McGinty when her ship finally sailed it was wrecked by raging monsoons which at one point filled Nelly's cabin with water 
against all odds, they arrived two days early in Hong Kong. Nellie was thrilled. It was the 39th day of her journey and she had travelled halfway around the world. Then, at the steamship company, a man informed Nellie that she had a competitor. Reporter Elizabeth Bisland had been sent by a magazine to beat Nellie's time, and it looked like she would succeed. Nellie was further disheartened to learn that her own ship, the Oceanic, would be delayed five days before sailing to Japan. On January 7, the Oceanic began the Pacific crossing from Yokohama, Japan to San Francisco. Nellie had an ocean and a continent to cross 8,000 miles and only 25 days in which to do it. Everyone on board knew Nellie's story and everyone was rooting for her. The ship's chief engineer had embezzled across the